on a very cold, wet, windy day. I'm stood up on top of this hill. I've traveled an hour south to come and visit this tiny little village hidden away in the middle of the countryside with so much history. It's been in movies and it's been in famous TV shows which have been shown all across the world. Can you recognize where I am? Let's go take a look. Hello and welcome to a very, very wet, tiny little village nestled in the middle of nowhere by the name of Turville. This village also goes by another name, which is the reason why I came here. It's got lots of history. It's been in numerous television shows and movies. I just wish that I could have brought better weather. This is St. Mary's Church. Unfortunately, it is under construction, so I'm not able to get in today. I have, however, been here in the past, so I'll put some pictures up so we can get to see inside of the church. The church was built roughly around the 12th century, but it is believed that there was a church here earlier than this church. The church itself is actually built of flint, which was the most commonly used stone around here of that time. This tower is completely all flint, and this was rebuilt in the 14th century. And the oldest part of the church still is the nave, which is like the center of a church, which you walk up and down, and that's in all churches of England. Looking around this beautiful, beautiful, very, very old graveyard, you can see how old the graves are. And these graves, the ones that you can actually still read, are from like the 1800s. We have 18... 1883, someone died at just a young age of 29 years old. And then looking down here at this one, we have another one from 1884. This person died at the age of 68 years. There is actually a website that you can use called Find My Grave. And in there you can punch in the person's name, their date of birth, the date of death, and then where you are and the location. And it's supposedly meant to bring up all the history of that person. I'm gonna take a few photographs, see if we can actually find any information about the people who are buried here. So by now, looking at the church, you've probably recognized where you've seen this church before, perhaps. This church has fe featured in a very famous British sitcom, but we'll get back to that later on. Let's carry on with a little bit more history of this beautiful little village. The next part of history for us here is this lovely little co cottage called Sleepy Cottage. Sleepy Cottage got its name due to a young lady who goes by the name of Ellen Sadler. 
and Ellen Sadler was born in 1859 and she had a huge family. They were all farm workers and she was the youngest of them all. There was 11 in total and her father sadly passed away when she was an infant. So they sent Ellen out to be a nursemaid. Now it's believed that a couple of weeks after she arrived she, she fell ill and she kept getting really quiet and dizzy and then bouts of drowsiness and then they put her into hospital and she was there for four months and in all the time that she was actually there they couldn't actually find anything wrong with her or they couldn't fix the problem so she was sent home within two days of her being home she fell asleep for nine years yes nine years and in that time she became quite famous and people actually started coming to see her like a tourist attraction they were cutting little locks of her hair off to keep her souvenirs doctors came no one could figure it out but she was still really well nourished so people started to believe it was a hoax and that it was her mum who was drugging her because back then people started giving money to see Ellen while she was asleep and she was making roughly or the family who she was with now were making roughly two pounds a week so in today's money that's about 215 to 220 pounds a week just for people to see her while she was asleep and then the lady who she was with for those nine years she died and within two days after this lady passing away Oddly, she started waking up and came round and then lived a normal, healthy life again. So no one actually knows if it was a medical condition or if she actually was being drugged as a tourist attraction for this lady to make money. And that's how Sleepy Cottage got its name. And it's still spoke about today in this village. So how or why does Turville still remain in public conversation, how is it still known? We have to fast forward to an era of filmmaking and a film named Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. That very world famous film was filmed here or parts of it were filmed here where it was filmed right up here where the windmill is. They took the actors there, they took the car there and they actually filmed there but unfortunately it's off limits to the public now. You can hike up and look over the high fences there, but there's CCTV there and it's far too wet and windy for me to fly my drone. But it was kind of like the modern day way of making this village famous. Then fast forwarding closer to today, you may have heard of Midsummer Murders. That was filmed here in the village. Also a scene from Killing Eve was filmed here, but then the most amazing one for me and for most of the British people, the BBC commissioned a series called The Vicar of Dibley. And it's today one of my favorite, favorite shows. And this is exactly where Geraldine, who was played by Dawn French. She lived right here. This was the vicarage. And looking back at the video from earlier, you might recognize that church. That is St. Barnabas, as it's called, in the TV series. And they did three series of the Vicar of Dibley, which started in 1998. And all the little actors would come around. And this was the village green that you would have seen in the Vicar of Dibley. There is the pub, which you do see. You do get to see the pub in the TV series, but not the actual inside. The inside of the pub, the rectory, and even inside of the church were all filmed in a studio in Surrey. But the actors did come down here for the outside scenes. And you'll have seen this so many times. I'm just gonna walk forward so you can actually see and recognize this beautiful, 
beautiful old cottage. So the first series was actually filmed here without a hitch, shall we say. But then when it came to the second series, the residents weren't that keen. I think because you can see it's such a small little place and it actually was decided, no, they weren't allowed to come back and film a second series. So the BBC had to come and speak with the councillors here and the people, the local people of the village. Now, I don't know if any money who was handed under a table, however, the person who was mostly saying no, all of a sudden, let them film in their backyard. Well, in their garden, should we say, which the gardens here are absolutely huge. And it was the village fate of the Vicar of Dibley. And they had probably a star who you will all have heard of, Kylie Minogue. She actually was here for that series too. Along with Kylie being in The Vicar of Dibley, there was also Sean Bean, Miranda Hart, Terry Wogan, and then even Johnny Depp and Sting were in The Vicar of Dibley also. My Lord is Right here, the famous Bull and Butcher pub. This was actually in the Midsummer Murders and it actually has a plaque stating that it was in there. They actually filmed inside this pub. There was only a small amount of characters in the Vicar, Vicar of Dibley and the main one was Geraldine Granger. She was the new vicar who arrived into the village after the old man who was the vicar here he actually passed away in middle of a service on a sunday afternoon so they had to ship a new one in and they sent a female vicar and back then there was a lot of controversy about female vicars so the residents of dibley were not happy about receiving this female vicar who later turned on to be the greatest vicar that they'd ever had and she melted the heart of all the villagers and she was spicy she was funny she fell in love she did the famous jumping in the puddle scene which i think to this day has to be the funniest scene and it actually won an award also that was great if you haven't seen it you really have to watch the whole episode but here it is anyway Next up were the Hortons. You had David and you also had Hugo. They were kind of like the richest ones and David was like the chief counsellor. He was the grumpy one. He was the miserable one. Who's actual? He actually started to fall for Geraldine and they lived in a big manor house which was actually filmed about 30 miles away from here. Only the outside of it, the inside was actually done in, in a studio also. Hugo was kind of like the male village idiot, shall we say, the son of David. And he actually started to have feelings for Alice, who later on in those episodes, they got married and I think they had 10 children. <laughs> That then would bring us on to Alice. Alice for me, uh, played by Emma Chambers. She was the greatest character for me. She was like the dizzy, like, well, how do you say it nicely? She wasn't very well-educated character and she was the virtue of the, um, of the vicar, Geraldine. And she fell in love with Hugo and then they got married. I think they had something like 10 children and, at the end of every episode, you would see Geraldine and Alice having a joke at the end. It was kind of like what made this sitcom so unique and so fun, because at the end of every episode, there was a crazy joke between them both. 
there are so many to choose from and I wish I could tell you them all, I really do. Next up was uh, Jim Trot, he was a no, 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 yes. He was an old boy, whatever he was saying. <laughs> he always would say, no, 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 yes. Uh, and then he went on to a TV show <laughs> called Deal or No Deal. And he played it in character, this actor. And he wanted to take the deal. But because he kept saying, no, 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 no. Deal. <laughs> he ended up losing all his money. He was such a cool character. Next up, there was a very, very cute old man. And I actually felt quite sorry for him because he was like the dull, boring one. He was, um, he always wrote the notes at the council meetings and his name was Frank Pickle. And <laughs> he was a very, very cool actor. And in one episode, it was where there was the Dibley Live radio show and Frank actually came out that he was gay. And because... Everyone in the village thought that he was so dull and boring. No one listened to the radio show. So next time he saw everyone, he was really nervous about seeing everybody because he came out. But no one actually listened to the show. So no one actually knew. But as the episodes in the series carried on, it actually just trickled into the story about him being a gay man. And none of the villagers actually cared. They just still treated him the same with all the love and respect that he deserved. Next up was the batty old lady, Mrs. Cropley, and she was the lady who couldn't cook, but she always tried to come up with new recipes. For example, she would have potatoes and raspberries on toast. She then made, rather than a chocolate cake, it was a, <laughs> it was a cake made out of marmite, and she made things with anchovies, and she did the flower arranging in the church, which were carnations and pineapples at one point. And in one scene, you could see that Mrs. Cropley lived in one of these little cottages here. She was filmed outside with Jim chatting away about how change has to happen so they could accept that Geraldine was now a resident in the village and she was the vicar. And then last up was Owen, the farmer. He was a dirty old guy. Well, say old guy. He was a dirty guy who was like besotted with trying to get with Geraldine. And he kept always making innuendos with her. And he kept trying to talk about how bizarre things that would happen on his farm. And he also had lots of bowel trouble. And he was regularly talking about that as well. And... The sad part about all of this is that um, only two of the cast members are still alive, which are James Fleet, who played Hugo, and then Geraldine Granger, who was played by Dawn French. Sadly, everyone else has passed away. Just the two of them remain now. So that is the story of Turville and the films and the TV series which have been filmed here, which still keeps it on the map and in the memories of people from that era where these th films and TV shows were filmed. So I do hope that you've enjoyed coming down memory lane with me and having a reminder of brilliant British sitcoms and the old movie Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and... Thanks for taking a look around. I wish the weather could have been better for us all today and I wish the church was open. But I will just leave you with this as they always did at the end of every episode of Vicar of Dibley. Love you, bye. So there's this nun, right, mm. and she's having a bath and a knock comes on the door. Oh, dear. Yeah, and she says, who is it? And the reply comes, it's the blind man. Can I come in? She thinks for a minute and she says, yes, all right then, come in. So this chap comes in and says, nice tits, where do you want me to hang the blind? <laughs> <laughs>